What comes after this is, what do we do with it now? Put these out as controls, so if we have to change them again, then essentially we don't have to dive in here to do it. We can just change the controls on the outside. Again, another good habit to get into. This is our height control, so low value, this will be our high value. And this one will be our steepness. Just doing a bit of tidy up before we get on to the next part. You can see in the weighting compound, I now have three different values to play with. I'm going to change these to floats as well. And that's good. We've even got a bit of a beach here because this isn't quite so high. But, you know, we can, again, this gives us the ability to change this as we see fit. You're able to manipulate this. Let me get a look. Fabulous. Come next week, we'll be putting some roads through that forest. So right now, all we're doing really is just putting everything out to a terminal so we can see it as we work. We've got to the point now where our actual forest is looking pretty good. It's, it's kind of the way we want it. So we need to decide how we're going to get this out. And if you were working in a VFX environment or an animation environment, your options here are pretty much all to do with rendering. So do I need to get an Alembic out? Do I need to render it just from Bifrost? All of that kind of thing. As we're working in a game-based environment, our challenge becomes how do we get this lovely forest out to our game engine of choice? So let's have a look at some output options for that. The very first one we should look at is let's consolidate all of this. What I'm doing here is I've got some things are in my proxy, some things are in my diagnostic, everything's going everywhere. So what I'm going to do really, really quickly is just make a Bifrost output. We're not going to worry about where that's going to go, but we'll make a Bifrost object output. And the easiest way to do that is to wrap all of this up into an array. The way to do that is you just build an array. I'm going to start just adding all of these to the array. They're going to disappear as we do them because we'll no longer need the terminal, but everything will come back shortly. Now those are our tree trunks. And this can become our Bifrost output. And from here we can go back out to our diagnostic, we've got everything back. What this allows us to do is, and I'm going to show you that one of the Bifrost output ways now, is we go output, put down a new output node, and we can plug this array into the output. Once we've done that, if you right click on the port, you can create a Maya mesh. And you can see what's happened here. It has given us an array, because this is an array. It's given us four objects, so every object in the array with the name array. Let's hide the Bifrost for a second. One problem here, where did our trees go? I know it doesn't look like it, but our colors are actually still there. If we select a terrain object and we go to mesh display, toggle display colors attribute, then you can see our colors back. And the same here, mesh display, toggle display colors attribute, because those colors are colors per vertex. And so I've just told Maya to display those colors in the view. That's our lake, that's our terrain. But we don't appear to have anything for these two. And that's because these two are not objects right now. They are just instances. There's one of them and there's the other. And an instance by itself is just points with information. Okay, so it's, it's going to give us the point positions and the point ID and the, the orientations and, 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 and all of that kind of thing. So there's a little bit we have to do first before we can output to Maya. So I'm just going to delete that for now and we'll get rid of these objects that we've made. Turn on our Bifrost again. So what we have to do now is bake this, bake the instances to objects. And of course there's a node to do that. So bake instance to geometry. And inside this node it's going to take all of our geometry and merge them into a mesh. As with everything, feel free to dive in here and see how it does it. It's a good learning experience. Let's now replace this one, which is the tops of our trees. There we go. This one. Now these are meshes, so we want the merged meshes. You notice everything's gotten a lot slower. So the other thing you'll notice is that these meshes have lost their colors. And that's a problem we'll have to get around. The reason for that is that when you merge the meshes, it doesn't take the color information along with it. And you need to retrieve that and put it back on. <laughs> that's actually quite difficult. But for now, we'll just keep going. And I'll look into, we'll look into doing that in just a minute. So now we just bake these ones as well and plug them out there. That's going to be our trunks. They're all going to go the same color in a minute. As I said, it's gone from just displaying a lot of points to displaying a lot of meshes. So it takes a little while to work that out. You can see the trunks there. And again, all of the colors have changed. And it's at this point that I can go to my output, 
We'll remake our output, plug this in here. And before we do anything around exporting right now, I'm just going to right click on that. Again, it's taking a lot longer because it's big. Right click on that, I'm going to rename that. It's going to call this forest environment. Now, same as before, right click, create my mesh. Right click on the port, create my mesh. It's going to take a little bit longer. So long, in fact, I may have to pause and come back. And there we go. So let's again hide our Bifrost. Select our first one, mesh display, toggle display. Second one. Now we've got trees. So these are the tops of our trees. Again, mesh display, toggle display color. Everything's taking a lot longer because you've got meshes now instead of points. So this method works and it works well, but it slows things down. So at this point, we have our geometry in Demire. We have it as a array we also in Bifrost have it as an array but we also have our geometry in Maya. This is what you would then export to an FBX. Now <clears throat> there are some problems with this. One is it's very slow. And the more things you instance, the more you make, the more meshes you create, the slower it's going to get. The other problem is that there is no simple way to get colors, to get your display colors onto this, onto your merge meshes. There is ways to do it. I'm just going to leave the colors for now, being that you've still got all of your meshes to get out. But now we have a Bifrost output. It outputs as an array and it outputs into Maya. This is no longer a Bifrost object. I can quite happily kill that output. And again, because we're working with roughly, I don't know, about 5,000 trees. No, 40,000 trees. Because of that, it's is what's slowing us down. We're turning each tree into a mesh. Probably good that we look at another way to do it. This is still valid. There are st still going to be times when you need to get your instances out to Maya. And like I said, I can show you in an addendum or a later video how to transfer the, the point colors across to the merge meshes. But this will be our Bifrost output. At this point in time, you would grab all of these, file, export selection, and you would export to FBX with all of the settings that you wanted to have. And then as per usual, you could load that FBX into your game engine. You'd have all of this kind of stuff. Or if you just wanted to export the lake and the terrain, same thing, grab that, export selected, out to FBX. That's how Maya and game engines have been talking for quite a long time. But now there's a new way to do it, which involves using USD. Now, we are covering USD later on in the course, so I'm not going to explain to you exactly how this works, but I am going to bring in the USD output node and hook it all up and show you how to set up a little bit of logic to get the Bifrost out or the USD out as well. So to make things a bit faster, I'm going to kill those. And I'm going to take these bakes away. So we'll just work for now. We'll just work with the instances rather than the, the baked instances because, well, because as, you can, as you'll be able to see in a second, I'll show you why. And we're back to where we were. So here's our Bifrost output. We need to now make this a USD output. The infomercials say, here's a compound I made earlier. Okay, it's two nodes I made earlier. And let me show you how this works. So... The USD output compound takes in all of the things, including the instances, all of the things that we're doing. There's the instances, terrain, lake, and all of the trees, and sets them up to output as a USD stage, which we can load in the game engine. Now, this USD prep compound here is literally, I brought in the crowns and the trunks as arrays. I need to split those out. We just, all we need to do there is hook up the crowns to the crowns and the trunks to the trunks. And then we'll need to put in the three meshes, uh, yeah, the three inputs here. So we need the instance points, which is this. We need the terrain mesh, which if I remember is this guy, yep. So let's put down a pass node so we can split the data off. That goes into the terrain mesh. And then the lake mesh is, I happen to know, this one. Can trace that back. Water plane terrain. 
So again, I'm going to put in a pass node. And that goes into the lake mesh. Right now we have a USD stage output to make sure that enable USD is on. And then we'll talk about these in just a second. But I'd like to be able to see my USD. So let's turn off this and we'll plug this into our output. And this is what USD is making for us. Looks very, very similar with some color changes to our Bifrost output. So what would be really good is the ability to switch between the two of these. Now, inside the USD output, I've also added a little something a little different, which is a color jitter, which is not there on the Bifrost output. We could do it, but I haven't added it for now. So before we do anything else, and before we even look at this in another program, let's make a switch here so that we can see one or the other of these. So first thing I'm going to do there is I'm going to put down a Boolean value. So just a true or false value. So I'm going to put down a value node, go over here, just change that to Boolean. Cool, and false is good for now. So let's say we'll apply false to the USD. Let's put an if statement in there. So this is this control is going to be, I want to see my USD. And that means that if we, we want to see the USD, if we, yeah, if we want to see the USD, we don't want to see the Bifrost. And if we do want to see the Bifrost, we don't want to see the USD. So all we've got to do there is reverse this by putting in a not. So it's coming in false. It's going to be going out true. And then put in another if statement here. And the reason I'm using two if statements and not one is that these are different types. That's a USD stage. That's a Bifrost object array. Not seeing anything because my display is off, so I'm just going to kill that terminal and put this back out to forest environment. So now you can see the Bifrost version. And if I change this, you see the USD version. And you can just switch between the two quite happily. Notice the colors change and things. I did that to just provide a little bit of a, a difference so that when we got to this stage, it wouldn't wasn't look like we we're just switching between the same things. So right now we have our output, which is still not baked. It's just instances right now. We have our Bifrost output, which is what we're looking at now. And then just by switching this, we have our USD output. 